Can you lead another animal from your riding horse? And can your riding animal be led from another? And are you capable of handling two animals at a time? You should be. Ponying isn't just a skill for experienced packers. It's an essential trail skill for every trail rider. So stick around and learn how, how I do it and why it's done. Hi, I'm Robert. You may know me as the Trailmeister. During most years, I spend the summer trail riding and horse camping. From front country glamping to pack trips deep into wilderness areas. The rest of the year, I lead trail riding and horse camping clinics across the U.S. and even internationally, where I share my knowledge to help you escape the arena and enjoy the great outdoors. This segment is brought to you by the letter P, as well as Troxel helmets, B&W trailer hitches, and scratch and all. Many thanks to everyone that makes Trailmeister possible. At its heart, ponying is a really simple concept. It's riding one animal while toying another. But like most things that sound simple, it's really a pretty complex operation because not only do you have to keep track of your riding horse, you have to be able to keep track of the animal that you're ponying all while using both hands at the same time. It can be pretty complicated pretty quickly, but it's an important skill for everybody to know. So why would anyone want to learn how to pony? There's a number of different examples besides leading a pack animal. What if you have a young horse or an older horse that needs conditioned? What if you're going on a ride and your riding partner leaves the ride unexpectedly and you have to get their horse back to the trailhead? Or if you have a young horse that you want to introduce to the trail, these are all excellent examples of why ponying is important. But you've got to do it safely. The way I see it, there's three main components to ponying safely. You, your riding animal, and your pack animal. Let's talk about you first. When I think of preparing myself to pony, I think, can I rein with one hand? Can I control my animal with, with neck reining? While I'm also carrying the lead for my pony animal in the other. So can I rein with one hand or the other while carrying my lead? And can I switch them on the go when I need? Speaking of leads, please don't ever, ever wrap your pony lead around your hand. Instead, grab the outside of the loops in your fingers. Protect your digits. Now let's talk about preparing our riding animal. Before you start leading a pony horse, your riding animal needs to be comfortable with having rope all around him. I spend a lot of time conditioning all of my animals to having a lead all around them. Over them, under them, around them, around their legs, all around so that they're used to the feel of a rope and it doesn't bother them. You can tell Ruger here is really concerned about the rope and a monster in the woods. And he's all right to look out for those monsters. I just don't want him to worry at all about a lead rope. Huh, what do you think about that, mister? And not only is this good for ponying, it's good for all your animals to know that ropes are their friend and not going to hurt them. Once you can accomplish all of those exercises from the ground, it's time to try it in the saddle. Again, your riding animals should be comfortable having ropes all around them. You should be able to do everything that you did from the ground from the saddle, including wrapping that rope around his legs. It requires some dexterity on my part that I don't really have. And your, your trail horse should be comfortable and not afraid of the rope, but yet still be responsive. Yes, he's a good Ruger. He's a good Ruger. Oh, yes, we have the Ruger. We love the Ruger boy. Back. Good girl. Every trail horse, whether you plan on ponying them or not, should be able to be ponied. For me, the biggest reason is, what if I weren't able to complete a ride? Say, I ended my ride in a hospital. Who is going to get Ellie here back to the trailhead safely? She needs to know how to be ponied safely so that somebody can get her back while I end the ride in the ER. Hopefully it won't happen, but just in case, I want Ellie to be a very good girl and to be able to be ponied out. Regardless of what you may have heard or of what you may have seen, being ponied is not about being drugged 
all over the mountainside or down the trail. Being ponied is about being light and responsive at the end of a lead. Walk on. And that starts from the ground. Walk on. Good girl. Good girl. If your pony can't do this from the ground, and quite frankly, even more, how in the world do you think you're going to be able to lead her from the saddle? And walk on. I want all of my ponies, walk on, to be light and responsive at the end of a lead without being afraid of the rope. Good girl. And turn. And even if I never do have to pony them, this kind of groundwork keeps them light and responsive and polite. So once your pony horse prospect is light and responsive at the end of a lead, then try it from the saddle. And even if you never do have to pony no it, snacking. exercises like this make sure that your pony is respectful and polite when you're on the ground and don't rush you and don't crowd you, which are both really good things because a polite pony is a good pony. Oh yes, she is. A polite pony is a good pony. So whether you ever have to use a pony in skills or not, it's a good thing for all to know. Oh, he scratched the ear. We scratched the ear. Oh, we got the lip. We got the lip. Yes, we got the lip. Oh, yes, she's a good girl. The equipment that you're going to want to pony is really pretty simple. I start all of my animals out in a rope halter. I like rope halters a lot for a lot of different reasons. For ponying, the rope halter reinforces the commands that I'm asking for. I like this model a lot. This is from Weaver Leather and it is reflective, which is wonderful when you're camping. I can shine a flashlight in on it at night and it shows up really well. The lead that you use is also important. I like Yacht Braid because it's got a great feel in my hand. The length is a very important thing. I like 12 feet long. I think a lead can be too long as well as too short. For me, 12 foot works really, really well. This is also from Weaver Leather. I believe it's their silver tip collection. Like it a lot. It feels great in my hand. The other thing for, for leading a pony is our saddle. And let's go to hang out with Ruger for a minute and talk about that one. I like a rigid tree saddle. I think that a rigid tree is going to hold its shape a lot better because you're not always going to be riding in, in a centered position when you're ponying somebody. And this doesn't deform the way a treeless or flexible tree saddle would. Other than the halter, the lead, and the saddle, the most important thing about leading are these gloves. Rope burn is a thing. It's not pleasant, and you can prevent it in large part by wearing gloves. Please do so. The more comfortable the three of you are with ponying, you're going to become very, very tempted to wrap your lead around your saddle horn. It's called a dally. And please don't. There's a number of reasons why this is a really, really bad thing. One, if there is a problem, at the very best, you're going to rip the horn off your saddle. Most people don't ride with rope and saddles, and they're made especially for that. Chances are, you're not riding with one. Secondly, and the reason I will never dally, is because if there's an accident, it's going to happen in a heartbeat, and I want to be able to instantly disengage myself from my pack animals. It's much easier to get off if I have to and pick up that lead than to be drugged down the side of a mountain because my pack mule fell. I've seen a lot of accidents from people dallying, and none of them are worth it at all. So regardless of what you've heard or seen, please think long and hard before you wrap your lead around your horn. Thanks for watching. Please stick around for the next segment where we talk about the letter Q. And as always, please give us a visit at trailmeister.com for the largest guide to horse trails and camps in the world, as well as lots of tips and other videos on trail riding and horse camping. While we're at it, 
please don't forget to give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. Ruger and Ellie here would sure appreciate it.